love the words of the first chapter of the Song of Solomon. <clears throat> the Shulamite woman said, Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For your love is better than wine because you, of the fragrance of your good ointments. Your name is ointment poured forth. Therefore, the virgins love you. Draw me away. Father, tonight, Lord, I pray that you would just draw us away into your presence. Father, draw us by your Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Speak to our hearts this evening, God. Encourage your bride tonight, Father, like never before. Even though the hour seems late and the darkness seems to increase, Lord, we know that as darkness increases, so does the light of your presence. It drives away that darkness tonight. Father, encourage those that need encouragement tonight, God. Lift those up that have been down tonight, God. Stir our hearts, Father, like never before. Draw us, as that Shulamite woman said, draw me. Lord, draw us, woo us tonight, court us into the courts of your presence, God. Kiss us with the kiss of your lips tonight, God, that when we leave this place that we can say, surely we have been with the Lord in your presence, God. May you get all glory and honor and praise, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. I want to share a word with you tonight. I was praying this week and just preparing some fresh words from the revelation that the Lord has been giving me. Tonight, I want to speak to you a message, living beyond limitations, living beyond limitations. I believe it is God's will. You can dare to differ with me if you like, but I believe it is God's will that we as sons and daughters of God, live in the supernatural presence of God. Not come in and then leave, come and go, but dwell in His supernatural presence. How many of you tonight, I ask you this question, how many of you feel tonight that you're living up to the potential that God has made available to you without any hands raised or replies? Think about it. You know, I would have to really question my own walk with the Lord. I mean, I love what I am experiencing in God and what I see God doing. But you know, there's that part of my heart that said there's more. There's another level. There's a deeper measure. There's a higher walk that God is calling you and I to. And, and I, I am believing tonight, church, that this message, that before this evening is over, some of you that are experiencing limitations in your life are going to see those limitations broken. A lot of the limitations that you and I face are mindsets. It has to do with our ability to think, to comprehend. And too many times we shortchange ourselves from the measure of God's presence that He wants you and I to live in. And I, I, I just wrote down a few th things tonight. What limitations have you accepted into your life that have held you back from becoming the man or the woman that God desires you to be? I wrote down a few things here. The lack of trust in God to do what He's promised to, He said He would do in His Word. How many of you know, Pastor Mike just said it, His Word is yea, and amen. If he said it, he'll do it. All we have to do is believe it and act upon the Word of God. The Bible said faith without works is what? It's dead. You get no fruit from just... I was talking to a couple yesterday and I said there is a lot of people that have a knowledge of the Word of God, but they don't have a deep understanding of it and what it means to each one of us, and how to apply the Word of God to our lives. That's only one, lack of trust. Number two, the fear of what the sacrifice may cost us if we go all in for God. You know, have you counted the cost? I just recently had to buy a new vehicle, and I had to count the cost. I paid more for that vehicle, about almost three times more than what I paid for my modular home that I bought back in 1973. 
but I had to weigh the cost. But many times, church, let me tell you, a lot of times when God pushes a call upon the life of an individual, too many times they feel the cost is too great and they walk away from it. I'm telling you, what God has for you, you can't put a value on it. I wouldn't be running from him tonight. I'd be running to him and say, God, I want all that you got for me. And no matter what, I got to give up. And see, this is what we're going to talk about tonight when we're talking about limitations in our life. Another one is fear of failure. Well, what happens if I venture out and it doesn't work? If you don't try, you won't know. Nothing, nothing. If you don't give it an effort, you'll never know. You know, I, I, I stop and look back on my life. You know, a, a lot of the limitations I grew up with, and I'm going to talk about some of them tonight. Living by what we feel and by our opinions rather than what God is saying. We cannot live by feelings in this hour. If we do, we, we're already set up for defeat. That's what's happening to a lot of people right now. They're living by, by their feelings. If we're going to live by faith, then live by faith in the Son of God. He is a God that loves you. He is a God that will not fail you. Lack of expectation. How many of you are living without expectation tonight? If you're going to go by what the world is saying tonight, you have no expectations of a great future. But I'm not going by what the world says. I'm going by what God said. I'm going by what God promised me in this book. That I can have life and I can have life more abundant. And that means there's always more. No matter how much I receive, no matter how much God blesses me, there is always more when it comes to the things of God, when it comes to the kingdom of God, of His kingdom. There is no limitations. It's increase, increase, increase. It's abundance, abundance, abundance. What does abundant life look like to you tonight? What would abundant life look like on you tonight? I want to live in His abundance tonight. I want to live by the Word of God and His promises. Another one that is an issue here is low self-esteem of how we see ourselves. What is the gauge that you use to gauge who you are and how you see yourself tonight? Friend, if, <laughs> if I gauge myself by what I see in the mirror when I get up in the morning at 6 o'clock, I may have a different opinion, but it's not what I see on the surface, but what's inside of me. Not so much what, but who is living in me, but low self-esteem. Uh, we, we, I, I don't know if pastor said it tonight, but the word shame. There's so many people today that are living in the shame of their past. And God wants to break that shame. Maybe you're sitting here tonight. Maybe you're watching online tonight. And that's been a big issue in your life. Maybe it's been low self-esteem. By the time this service is over, we're going to pray and break that shame off of your life. The lies that others have said about you. Their opinions. Their accusations. Think about it. What is the definition of limitations? It means to set limits, this is from Webster's, to reduce in quantity or extent something that restrains or confines, to set boundaries. And I wrote in parentheses, to fence ourselves in. And tonight when I talk about living beyond our limitations, I'm going to encourage you to get outside of that religious box that you've been living in. Religion will put you in bondage. But freedom comes when we get out of that box of religion and begin to trust God with all of our heart and love Him with all of our heart and mind and strength and will tonight. God is calling each of us to step up and to step out to places where we've never been before in our relationship with the Lord. I wrote this down. You can write it down if you want to. Our only limitations are those that we impose upon ourselves. 
It's time that we quit blaming somebody else for why we are not what God had called us to be. Friend, it is a personal choice. It's time to let go of those other things that have held us back and break those restraints off of us tonight. I want to read a couple verses of Scripture here for you. Colossians 2, 9 and 10. Listen to these words. For in Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in Him. I love that. In Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And if we are in Him, we walk in that completeness of who He is in our lives. Who is the head of all principality and power. There is no power like the power of God. There's no power the enemy has that can compare to the power of God tonight. Philippians 2.13, I want to read this out of the Amplified Bible. It says, For it is not your strength, but it is God who is effectively working at work in you, both to will and to work that is strengthening, energizing, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose for His good pleasure. You know, what I do, I know Pastor Mike would tell you the same thing. What we do, we do not do for our glory to make a name for ourselves. We do it for His glory, to bring honor back to the Lord. Because I can tell you, if it depended on me, uh, it would not be well in what I would attempt to do. But thank God for the power and the presence of God in me and in you tonight. That will break the power of limitations off of our lives. John 1, 16, it says, In His fullness we have all received. Did you get that? It's past tense. Have received. Are you walking in the fullness that He has made available for you and for me? May God make us aware of the fullness of His presence living and dwelling in you and I. It says here, And of His fullness we have received, and grace for grace. John 10.10, 10, I believe we qu I quoted that a while ago. The thief comes not except for to steal, kill, and destroy. I wrote down here, he wants to steal. The first thing the devil wants to do is steal your identity in Christ. Who you are in Him. Say this with me. I am a blood-washed, born-again, child of God. I have the Holy Spirit living in me. And I am His son, or you can say daughter. Whatever you are tonight, that's who you are. Amen. Church, recognize that tonight. You know, we beat ourselves up. And we're, we, we say, well, who am I? Well, I know who I am tonight. I don't know about you, but I know who I am. I'm a son of God. I am a chosen one of God. God chose me. I didn't choose Him. He chose me. The Bible says even before the foundations of the earth, He chose me. He knew that you and I were going to be where we are on August the 15th of 2021. And God chose us to live here and to be here for such a time as this. That He could pour His fullness of who He is into us. To the measure that we can manage it. Now listen, I'm telling you, if He gave us everything that He is tonight, in all of His glory, we'd explode in this place. You know, that wouldn't be such a bad thing anyhow. I think I'd like to, I better be careful what I say. He might hit me with it tonight. <laughs> Pastor Mike, you might have to finish this message for me. But I say, Lord, let your glory flow. Let your spirit flow in this place. Let it flow through the airways into those that are watching online tonight. Those that are discouraged. Those that are hurting. Those that have been living under limitations. The thief comes to steal your identity. He comes to kill your destiny. To rob you of the will and the purpose that God wants to do in your life. This is what Jesus was saying when he was talking about the, the uh, will of the enemy. To dis and, and then the, the last thing the devil would desire to do, church, is destroy your soul. He wants you to spend eternity in hell with him. I tell you what, I like the other alternative a lot better. I like the alternative. Not only did Jesus Christ give us life and that life more abundantly here, but He's also prepared a place for us in heaven and glory that we will be with Him, live and dwell with Him forever and ever tonight. That sounds like a pretty good option tonight. 
I believe that we are in a time where the Lord is stretching us, waiting, wanting to expand our territory and our influence. I was thinking about where we are as a church in this hour. And I thought about some of the saints of old that have gone before us. You know, I, I, I don't know what your mindset is or what it was when you got born again. I, I know what I was. I know what the Lord did for me and things. And sometimes I think a lot of times we have the misconception that when we're born again, all of our troubles are over. Uh, life is going to be a cakewalk. It's going to be a bed of roses. And it's going to be everything we desired it to be. What a mistake it is to begin to think like that. And I believe the church has bought into a lot of this over the years that we have built our relationship with Jesus Christ on emotions. Uh, I mean, I love emotions. I love to be in a church service where the power of God is poured out and, and they experience that, that, that power, that glory, that presence of God in our lives. But friend, if we build our walk with the Lord on, and base it on the emotions, those emotions come and go. But the Spirit of God comes and dwells in us. Uh, I, I wish that I could stand here as a minister of the gospel tonight and tell you things in the world are going to get better. I am believing for revival, but it may be a revival on a different level than what you and I are thinking about and what we picture it to be. There's revival. Let me tell you, there is revival in China tonight. There is revival in Iraq tonight. But those people in China and Iraq do not meet like you and I do here tonight. They're meeting in the darkness of night underground in a hidden place. They have no freedom to meet. Friend, I don't know. I'm not here to, I, I, I'm not one to predict things, but could it be? that the revival that's coming may happen in America in a very similar way. Because the enemy is out to destroy the church. He's out to turn the lights out in the church and shut it down. But I'm telling you, it will not happen. But do not have a preconceived idea of what this revival is going to look like. It may be a whole lot different than we think. But I'm going to tell you, Whatever we have to deal with, we'll deal with it. Whatever we have to go through as a, the body of Christ, we will go through it with His strength going before us. And He will make a way for us. He will have a bride when He comes. When, that, when the Father says, Son, go get your bride, He's not coming for a broken down, defeated church that the devil is beat up and worked over and bleeding and laying on, on the side of the road. But He's coming for a glorious church that's filled with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I believe He's going to come at a peak hour. Uh, you know the Bible, I often said this, the Bible says, In an hour when you think not, the Son of Man will come. And, and what better time would it be than that, that, who would think that he would come when the church is at its highest point, when the glory of God is moving, souls are being saved, bodies are being healed, and people are being set free. But friend, I believe with all of my heart, something witnesses in my spirit that he's going to come in a time where we don't think he's coming. Most of us would welcome it right now, wouldn't we? It would be great within the next few moments if we heard a, a trumpet sound in the heavenly realm and, and, and all of a sudden we begin to lift off the ground. But you know what my heart feels tonight? What about those that aren't ready tonight? What about those that haven't heard the gospel like you and I have heard? Who's going to tell them what hope that they have tonight? We are their hope through Christ tonight. You are the hope of the lost in this world tonight. It's not just pastors in a pulpit that are the hope tonight, but every one of you that's born again can Carry that hope and you need to carry it into a world that's lost and dying tonight. Begin to witness for the Lord. He is reassuring us of his faithfulness to fulfill his promises in us and then through us. I don't only want God to do something for me. I want God to do something in me and through me. I want to touch as many lives as I can touch. I want to make the enemy wish he would have left his fingers off of me. 
Sometimes we become easy prey of the enemy. But I tell you what, God is raising up a church tonight. God is raising up a people that's filled with the fire and the glory of God's presence. I want to read to you out of Isaiah. I come across this scripture, Isaiah 54. The first verse says, Sing, O barren, you who had not born, break forth into singing and cry aloud. You know, this was written back in the Old Testament, but I believe it's a word for the church tonight. I believe a lot of churches tonight are living in barrenness tonight. That God wants to do some birthing. God wants to see new birthing in the church. How about it? Amen? God wants to see new souls being won into the kingdom of God. You have not, who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. And here he goes on in verse 2. This is what the Lord is saying tonight. Enlarge the place of your tent. And let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. You know, when he was talking about this, I believe he was referring in a way, talking about the temple and, and the Old Testament tabernacle. It's literally a tent area that had different departments or compartments in it. But it, it, what he's talking about today, I believe, again, is the church. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords. Time, it's time, church, our influence goes outside the walls of a building. That's what he's saying. Stretch yourself. Be stretched. Stretch out the curtains. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right. I got to make sure that's my right. That'd be your left. And to the left. And your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabitable. Friend, if there's one main reason I do what I'm doing in this hour, it's not just for me, but it's for my children and my children's children. It's for the generations that's coming behind me tonight. If this world keeps traveling in the direction that it's traveling in, our children and our grandchildren will not have a world to live in in a very, very short time. But it's time that we step up and say, not on my watch. It's not going to happen while I've got life and breath that I'm going to preach the Word of God and I'm going to encourage people and I want to see souls saved and people delivered and set free from limitations. Tonight's service is about breaking off those limitations. Don't, don't look me in the eye tonight and tell me, Pastor, I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can. And you will. Because you're going to begin to realize who you are in Christ and what you possess in your heart and in your life. Yeah. I put this in a big square box. I believe it's the word of the Lord. Do not fear for you will not be ashamed. You will not be ashamed. It's time to break shame off of us. Yes. How many of you have had somebody, I, I, I used to hear quite often growing up, shame on you. If I did something I shouldn't have done, shame on you. And you know what? Words have power. And a lot of people, when they were little children, heard that many, many times, and they grow up as an adult with a spirit of shame on their life. I say, Lord, break it off tonight. If that's you, just surrender that. Say, Lord, I give it to you. Take this shame off of me tonight. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed, neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. For you will forget the shame of your youth, and you will not remember the reproach of your widowhood or your barrenness anymore. You're not going to be a widow. You know why? For your maker, verse 5, is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. Is He your God tonight? Is He really? Do you know Him? Or do you just know about Him tonight? There's a lot of people just like the Word of God. A lot of people... I, 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 I love, love it when people can memorize Scripture after Scripture and chapter after chapter. It's one thing to memorize it, as I said earlier. But it's another thing to know. And have an understanding of what that word is. Right. Thy word have I hid in my heart. I believe David said that I might not sin against thee. You know that, that word. The word of God is our shield. That word of God is our protection. When the enemy comes in like a flood. That God will raise up a standard against him. And I believe that standard Pastor Mike is the word of God. It was the word that Jesus used three times to defeat the devil. He used the word. He didn't stand there and debate with the devil. 
He didn't spend a half hour, 45 minutes on each one of those three points right away. He said, it is written. Friend, you and I need to learn how to use the Word of God. We need to learn how to use the sword of the Spirit that God has given us. I believe this is a word for the church and this and each one of us in this present hour. God is saying, take the limits off of me. How many of you remember? It was a while back that I, I shared that testimony. I get up one Sunday morning getting ready to go to the church in Thermont to preach. And he, I know it was the Lord's voice. He said, you tell my church this morning to tell them to take the limits off of me. There's a lot of things I want to do, but they've limited me. It's time that we the church of Christ take the limits off of him and begin to live in the fullness that he intended us to live in. Think about Joseph tonight. Joseph had limitations. He had a pit that he was thrown. He had brothers that hated him, a pit that he was thrown into. And then he was thrown into prison for a few more years. But he didn't let those limitations stop him from becoming the man of God he called him to be. Think about David tonight. When David went up against Goliath, you know in the natural, if you saw a picture of that and didn't know Scripture, you'd say, that little guy's not going to make it. He's done. He's fried. He's going to become Goliath's meal today. But David, beyond the stature, the physical limitations, knew his God. He knew his God. He, began, he learned to live beyond his limitations. You and I need to learn to live beyond him. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, even though he was in a fleshly body, he lived beyond the limitations that fleshly body presented to him because he lived in the Spirit, in the fullness of the Spirit of God that was upon him. It is the presence of the Lord with us and in us, working through us, that will make us victors over all the works of the enemy. We tend to move in and out of the supernatural presence of God. Church, wouldn't it be something, wouldn't it be something in our lives if what we experience on a Sunday morning and a Sunday night around these altars in this sanctuary could be the same atmosphere we live in on Monday morning and Tuesday and Wednesday? I only got one question for you. Why not? Why not? My Bible tells me Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, again, week after week, month after month. He's the same. He does not change. But why have we not learned to enter in and live in the fullness of his presence every day? Think about it. I just throw this out for you to think about tonight. I believe we can live in the anointing of the Holy Spirit 24-7. I believe we can live in victory even though we have things that come against us. That we can live in the victory wherewith Christ has already given us that victory. If we will learn to do that and not let circumstances put limitations on our life. We may receive a fresh revelation of the Lord, His plans and destinies. He's prepared for us to launch out and to possess and live in the fullness. Listen to me. It doesn't depend on our present ability. It really depends solely on our availability, our surrender to the Lord. I know I've preached it. Pastor Mike's preached it. I've heard others I've said under preach it about total surrender. Not partial. I, I think for too long, too many in the body of Christ have not given Christ their all but part. But they hold on. There's portions that they hold on to that they have not learned to trust God with. And that's where we get into trouble, church, because the devil will begin to work in those areas of our life to rob us of the fullness of God's presence in our life. To know, to comprehend what our resources are in Christ. I know I preached on this before, but I want to share this scripture with you tonight as I get ready to close. I'm not going to preach real, real long. I don't have to. But Ephesians chapter 3, beginning at verse 14, it's a prayer that Paul, Paul prayed a couple prayers over the church at Ephesus that are written in scripture. 
There's one in Ephesians chapter 1 that I love dearly too. And I preach on quite a bit. But this is another. And beginning in verse 14 of Ephesians chapter 3. It says, For this reason I, Paul speaking, bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant to you, I want you to get this, that he would grant, it's a grant, it's a gift. A grant is a gift. There isn't a price tag on it. You've got to pay so much to get. This is a grant. That he would grant to you according to the riches of his glory. His glory. To be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. To be strengthened with his might. With the very power of God. I pray, Lord, tonight, give us a revelation of your might. Give us a, a foretaste of your might and your glory that is even now resident within us. Awaken us to the reality of that presence. That Christ may dwell in your heart. I underlined may dwell, and I put it in parentheses. For how many times, church, I want you to think about this. How many times do we step in to the presence of God and then when troubles come, we step out? And the troubles become our focus and not where our position was in Christ. Where our position of dwelling, dwelling in Christ not just when things are going good, but continually dwelling in Christ. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love. That's a sermon all by itself. To love. To love God. To love one another. To love our enemies. And do good to them that hurt us. Love, love, love. God is love. That's who He is. He loved us, the Bible says, while we were yet sinners. The Bible says Jesus died for us. When he died over 2,000 years ago in Calvary, he not only died for the people of that day, he died for every generation after that, that they might have the opportunity to know him and to know his love. Then that we may be able to comprehend. What's it mean to comprehend? To know, to have a recollection of have the wisdom of the knowledge of that we may comprehend with all the saints what is the width how wide is that how wide is the love of God how long is the love of God how deep is the love of God you know we used to say if you went straight through the center of the earth you'd end up over in China that's not a good place to be now anyhow but you know, when I'm talking about de depth, when I'm talking about width and length and depth and height, there is no measurement that can measure any of those four things when it comes to the Lord. He's measureless, church. He's boundless tonight. His love for us is just like that. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Verse 19, that you, I love this, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. That you may be. When he said that, it's available. It's available. The fullness of God. Think about it. The fullness of who he is is available to you and I tonight. You know, I, when I think about that, I go back and look at the writings of Jesus. I look at what Jesus done. All the miracles he did. And what did he say before he left? The things that I do shall you do also. And even greater things than these shall you do because I go to my Father. The things he did, friend, they're, they're not just for a few people to do. You can do them. You have the capability because of the fullness of God that's dwelling in you. We need to learn to release what's in us. And, 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 and i, I got to quit putting it, who's in us? Not what is in us, who's in us? Who's living in me tonight? Who's living in your heart? The fullness Help us, Lord, to wrap our mind around that tonight. To wrap our mind around the, the capabilities that you and I have tonight in Christ. We can conquer the world. 
We can be like Pinky and the brain. Pinky said to Brain, Brain, what are we going to do tonight? Oh, Pinky, we're going to conquer the world. He, he was the brain. He had his ideas. Friend, tonight we don't need a cartoon. We got Christ and we can conquer the world. We can conquer. He's already conquered sin and death. He's already conquered hell and the grave. He's defeated death tonight. His life. And who he is lives in me. His life lives through me tonight. I get chills when I'm th- just talking about that. The God of all glory. The God of all creation is living inside of me. And, and, and it don't make him any less if he's in you and in you and in you. He's still God. He's still who he is and all the fullness he is living in each one of us. If the church in the world would recognize who we are in Christ and what we possess in Christ tonight, the devil and all the demons in hell could not stop us. They couldn't stop the church. Government could not stop the church. Evil tyrants could not stop the church. If the church would wake up to the reality of who we are, it's time to take the limits off. Take the limits off of yourself, but more than that, take them off of God and let God move and live and have His being in you tonight. It's in Him we live and move and have our being tonight. I'm not a motivational speaker. Don't, don't, don't look at me like that. I'm not here to motivate you. I'm here to challenge you tonight. I'm here to challenge you to step up to the plate. And, and say, God, I, I want to know you in all your fullness. But the only way I can know him in all my fullness, and all his fullness, that, that he has all of me. And not part of me. Not just my spirit man. We're three parts, spirit, soul, and body. I want him to have my soul and body tonight. Our soul is our mind and our will and our emotions. I want him to have that tonight. I don't want to ride a roller coaster life of emotions. I've done that. I've done that for too long. But I said, Lord, take my mind, take my will, and take my emotions. And and if I get a little emotional, it's because of the power of God. It's not something I'm trying to work up inside of me. I can can work up emotions. I can do that. I can. I have a way of doing those kind of things. But I don't want it to be me. I want it to be him. And then I want him to have my body tonight. My flesh, my blood, my bones. Friend, the battlegrounds that you and I face tonight and the biggest battlegrounds we fight tonight on are in our soul and our body. Our mind. Our mind is the devil's workshop when he begins to plant negative thoughts in our mind and begins to lead us astray. God wants us to surrender our mind and our will and our emotions to God. He wants us to surrender our all to him and say, God, here it is. Here I am. Take me. Use me. Help me tonight. Verse 20. One of my favorite verses, part of, the, of what we use in our above and beyond ministries. And now to him who is able. How many of you believe God's able tonight? He's able to do it for you. And now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above. That means way up here. Way up there. Above all. In in fact, right now it's out of your reach. But you're going to be, before long, you're going to be able to apprehend it. You'll be able to grab it. Above all we can ask. I, I love what it's, ask or think. According to the power that works in us. Did you get that to the power that's working in you tonight? How many of you feel power? The power of God's working in you. Some of you are about to go on an adventure in the Lord. God is about to take you to places you've never been before in your relationship with Him, in your walk with Him, in your ministry for Him. I'm looking forward to that. I love what God has been doing in our ministry. I love what the lives of people that I'm hearing that are being ch- from that are being changed and transformed. But friend, I know there's more. I know there's another level, a deeper place, but yet a higher place in the Lord that He's drawing each one of us into. According to the power that works in us, to Him, to Him be glory. Can you lift your hands tonight and say, Lord, to You be glory. We give You glory tonight in the church 
by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. Ephesians 3.20. I want to read it to you out of the Message Bible. I love this. God can do anything, you know. Far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it by not pushing us around, but by working within us His Spirit deeply and gently within us. Glory to God in the church. Glory in the Messiah. In Jesus, glory down to all generations, glory through all millennia. Oh, yes. Glory, glory, glory. Friend, it's time to live beyond the limitations that you and I have been living under. And I'll, I, I, if, if I, I give an altar call tonight, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be the first one on that line. I said, Lord, take away all the limitations. I give them to you tonight. Surrender Surrender. What limitations are you battling tonight? I wrote down here, renounce them and break their power off of you. You that are watching online tonight, I encourage you, whatever the Holy Spirit is speaking to you about right now, let go of it. Whatever you've been holding on that's held you back, it's become an anchor that's kept you from going out into the deep things of God. Cut the cord tonight. Sever that cord. Let the anchor back there and begin to sail into the deep of the Lord. Father, tonight we bless you in this place. We bless those watching online tonight. Father God, I pray right now that the breaker anointing of your Holy Spirit will begin to break off every limitation. Father God, as people begin to lift their hearts and their hands and surrender to you. God, every one of those things will be severed and dispersed of, Father, tonight, that they can move and walk and live in the fullness of your power and your presence in their life. That, God, they will be strong, that they will see the strongholds of the enemy being torn down all around them. God, that you will use them to do miraculous things. Father God, you said in your word that the Lord... Uh, we would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. That no demonic power could stand against the power of God working in us. Father God, let that be the testimonies that begin to come out of the hearts and the lives of your people tonight. Not only here in this auditorium, but watching online tonight. Father God, we surrender to you. We surrender to you. All to you, Father God. We give it all to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me this evening? Huh. You know, there's some things that it's great to have people pray for us. But when it comes to personal surrender, that's between you and God. That's between you and Him tonight. And I, I know when I, I was preparing this message, I know God was speaking to me as well as he's speaking to you. And there's things I wish I could stand here and tell you that, that every limitation that I've had in my life is totally gone. I'm still dealing. I, I just It's like peeling the another layer of an onion skin off. There's another layer under that. But God, I'm telling you that the size of that that thing is getting smaller and smaller that, that we would say would be a stronghold in our life. God is revealing things to you and I. He's getting His church ready for what He's about to do. And I, I, again, church, I'm telling you, I, I wish I could tell you that things are going to get really, really rosy in the world we're living in. But I got news for you. It's not going to get that way out there. But I believe for the child of God and for the true church that He is raising up right now, we're going to see God move in ways we've always desired and dreamed. And he's going to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can ask or think. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I lift my hands and say, Lord, I'm a candidate. I'm a candidate for that supernatural that, God, I want to live. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters. If you feel led to get out of your seat tonight and just for a few.